Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and I am frustrated yet hopeful. Like you, I have been waiting many years for Google Home or Google Assistant to get those true automation features so that I could build a simple, easy, and yet effective smart home. I know I have waited personally for things like sensors and cameras and thermostats to be able to trigger or start routines and automation inside of the Google Home application. We've had bits and pieces and I like the newer or newish presence sensing feature and even the new triggers for sunset and sunrise that are available today. I have even been told in the past by Google themselves that they will be bringing those kinds of sensors and other devices that can trigger automation that would allow you and I to save time and money in our lives. But it has literally been years and it is time for me to uncover why Google is going to, for the most part, skip home automation as you and I know it and go to something that they believe is much better. I've been reviewing the history of Google in the smart home industry and early on in the proverbial race, Google bought a foothold by purchasing Nest. This gave them a number of well-selling, high-quality products, but it also gave them something more important in a technology called Thread. Thread was ready for the future and it had a lot of benefits over Zigbee and even in many cases benefits over Wi-Fi. This was a major edge on on competitors, but at this point, the fact is, Thread has more or less been donated to the smart home industry to be used in the upcoming Matter Standard. If you don't know what that is, there's a video up there that you can go and watch, and down in the description as well, that will catch you up to why that's so important. But I have spent years watching the development of Thread, and I watched it closely enough to actually see Google sour on the idea of them taking that technology to the top of the smart home pyramid, at least on their own. I then watched and even reported this to you guys that Google had gone out and they created within partnerships with companies like Silicon Labs or NXP Semiconductors, they had created boards and chipsets that were ready to be put in other manufacturers smart home products. So companies for many years now have been able to take those and put them into their products and use Thread, which should have allowed Google to take a huge chunk of the smart home industry as manufacturers came and piled on or into this great technology. But that push never came and what happened is Google started to shift into that next battleground or what they believe is the next battleground. So they have left a lot of these features that you and I have been asking for for many years. Think about it. It's not like Google doesn't know that there are many calls to get rid of their wake word. They're not ignoring that, they're just not doing anything about it right now. You've been asking for those automation features I talked about at the start of today's video for some time. It's not like their cloud services can't handle it. I mean, they've been growing cloud services in terms of customers and how much they're actually putting on those cloud services for many years now and in fact making great strides there. It's definitely not based on an ability to program something like this or to create something like this. The fact is Google has prioritized these kinds of things lower and lower as they focused more on that next battleground. To help paint this picture, I'm going to take you through a number of Google's more recent products and their primary features or their primary goals. If you want to pretend that you weren't as excited as I was about putting some glasses on and having them tell you all kinds of things about your world, then I'll call you a liar and a cheat in the comments and we'll move on with life. But that was the point of Google Glass. It was meant to benefit you in a number of ways, but you weren't really going to have to put in a lot of 
input into that device. And by the way, that's going to come back around as Google has purchased a company that was basically making a competitor or a replacement for Google Glass. Then you go to Google Home and the Google Assistant and you can accomplish a ton with these devices with what I would call minimal input as speech isn't that hard for most of us. Then we started to see technology like ultrasonic detection show up in the smart speakers and the smart displays and this would create minor features like the volume showing up when you walked up to the device or on smart displays giving you a little more information. And that coupled with one of my favorite features on the Nest Hub Max was the fact that I could look at the device, it would know it was me and then it would show me the content I wanted to see or tend its results towards me. Recently I got to show you the Nest Hub second generation which allows you to get all kinds of sleep data just by laying down next to the thing and turning on the setting. No input except your snoring required. And within all of those smart speakers, the Nest Hub second generation, the Nest Mini which improved on the Google Home Mini, the Nest Hub Max even, a little bit back to that, and of course the Nest Audio, every single launch spoke more and more to features around machine learning. We saw a similar acceleration of machine learning in partnership with Qualcomm on the Pixel phones. This all kind of peaked in the last couple of years as we saw these huge features come out with relatively inexpensive processors. Things like astrophotography or the portrait capabilities or even night sight on those cameras. And we come to very recently and we look at the Nest cameras and the Nest doorbell and we see specifications that are in some cases less than the previous generation and in many cases less than their direct competitors. But if their phones are any indication Google's image processing is going to be just fine even when we are talking about those resolutions at 1080p and 960p. This is because they were focusing more on machine learning and AI based features, things like animal detection and what Google told us about how they were doing this is they were training that system with literally thousands and thousands of cats and thousands and thousands of dogs being put and making sure that the camera could recognize that different animal. So they were training AI. And now we have all of this excitement around the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro which includes a new processor that Google says is their own and looks to be co-developed with Samsung in order to accelerate their ability to create more machine learning, more AI features and just do more overall. They even came out and said, you know what, we were being held back by the Qualcomm processors or the previous processors that we were using in these areas. The Pixel 6 and the new Nest cameras plus the newer smart displays, everything has been leading to what is essentially a launch point for that next battleground. They aren't looking at home automation as you traditionally know it because in a lot of cases, and I would argue that it's probably 90% of the world's population that would struggle with the idea of creating these home automation rules and making them work really well together and in order to create that time and money that we talked about. Instead, they are building products with machine learning, artificial intelligence, and then that contain these other sensor types like Soli, which is in the Nest Hub 2, and then does that sleep sensing for you. They're creating these technologies that allow something that you and I would call ambient computing. Ambient computing to you and I really just means that the environment and the people and the situation, all of that is taken into account and then beneficial things can occur for you or I. It's every futuristic movie or TV show that you've ever watched. The environment responds to you and I would challenge you to find more than a couple of features that Google has put out in the last year that require a lot of input from you. The fact is, Every time they put something out, 
All it's doing is reacting to the situation. But Google's now going to move the Android platform ahead with their new Tensor processor. They are going to take their new operating system called Fuchsia and allow that to be used with this system. Plus, they'll be taking the Google Nest speakers and smart displays and the Nest products that you know already and building that machine learning, artificial intelligence, and overall ambient computing system into those. They'll be teaching their devices what you will want to have happen. But this creates a bit of a frustration if you're a Google Nest owner because you've got to wait for this next battleground and they will not be focusing on these basic features that you and I are looking for. And that's why in a lot of cases I'm saying many people are going to move over to the Amazon Echo and Echo Show products here in the interim while that next battleground gets set up and we see who the eventual winner is of that one. That's why I'm going to recommend that you watch the video that is up on screen now, which will tell you about these new great features that Amazon has built that will cause many of you to want to head in that direction, even if it's just for a little while. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, don't hate, automate.